Hi everyone, I'm Mikey Stiller and it's my pleasure to welcome you to our Proctor Gallagher Streaming Club call. Today, Bob's going to be covering the science of getting rich. I've got my paper and pen here and hope you do too because I know we're going to want to take notes. Bob, I'm going to go ahead and hand it right over to you. Well, thank you very much, Mikey. We're going to have a good lesson this morning. Now, I, um, I decided at the last minute, in case you didn't have the Science of Getting Rich book, I'm sending you out the workbook that I'm working with. And you can uh, download it. Uh, take a minute and download it if you want. Or uh, print it out. There's um, what is there, about 20 pages, something like that. Now, this is... Um, this is one of the most important lessons in the science of getting rich. It's, uh, it's the second chapter, and in the workbook, we have all the laws in it. So if you want to study the laws a little bit, this is the place to do it. Now, let's look here on this first page of the chapter number two. It says, there is a science of getting rich. Now, do you know, the average person does not believe that. They believe that getting rich is put down to luck or connections or uh, birthright. It's a genetic thing. You know, it's passed along. They hear people talk about generational wealth. Well, I'm going to tell you something. You could start today, and in five years or less, you could create an enormous amount of wealth. Earning money is really a game. It really is a game. And there's rules to the game. Now, when we talk about science, we talk about laws. Laws are the rules. They're the name of the game. And so this is something you really want to get a hold of. There is a science of getting rich. It's an exact science. It's like algebra or arithmetic. Now, you know that science is based on numbers. And vibration is based on numbers. We're into vibration, we're into law. There are certain laws which govern the process of acquiring riches. Now, when we get into this, you're going to find that we're quoting Emerson. Emerson talked about the law of laws, and that was the law of cause and effect. Now, that law states what you put out comes back. Now, you'll find people trying to cut corners and trying to outsmart people. You know what happens? They get outsmarted. They're playing a game with themselves. They're playing with the mirror, and they don't really understand that. Once you learn and obey these laws, you will automatically become a member of that select group of people who live the secret. And you will get rich with mathematical certainty. Now, you see, this is the book that the movie The Secret was based on. Um, Rhonda Byrne put everything she had into it everything she had, and she will be reaping the rich results for the rest of her life. Half a billion people saw that movie. Now, there's another one coming out that you want to keep your eye open for. It's called Rising Up. It's going to be every bit as big, I think, as The Secret. And you're going to find that it's pretty powerful. But at any rate, we're talking about the laws here. Now, there is but one great law, namely, energy is. If you go to the scientist and ask, what is energy? They'll just say, energy is. Or you can go to the other side of the tracks. You see, there's only two sources of reference you can go to to find out anything about yourself. One science and the other is theology. If you go to the scientist and say, what is energy? They'll say, energy is. If you go to the theologian and say, what is God? They'll just say, God is. And they can't tell you any more than that. God is, is neither created nor destroyed, is a cause and effect of himself, is 100% evenly present in all places at the same time. When they say energy, energy is, is neither created nor destroyed, is the cause and effect of itself, is 100% evenly present in all places at the same time. You see, for many, many years, it was believed that science and religion were antagonistic. They're not antagonistic at all. They're compatible. One studies the cause, in my opinion. One studies the cause, and the other studies the effect. Now, I've studied this daily for over 50 years, 55 years, a long time. And I was talking to Mikey about it one day, and um, I, I said, Mikey, I started to study this before you were born. And she said, Bob, 
you started to study this before my mother was born. <laughs> all right. Now, all physical and mental science is based on this one great law and its seven subsidiary laws, which operate in coordination with each other. The law of vibration is the law that serves as the foundation for the law of attraction. Now, the law of attraction is something we're all interested in. There's all kinds of people writing books on it, and they're talking about it, and many of them don't really understand it in any great depth. The law of attraction is a law of the universe. The only thing you can attract to you are the things you're in harmonious vibration with. If you turn on AM 1010 on your dial in Toronto on the radio, you're going to get a radio station. It's a talk station. It's called CFRB. And that's the only station you can get on that frequency. Now, if you turn the dial, what you're doing is moving off that frequency. And then the only thing you get are the things that's on the frequency you've turned on to. Well, the only thing you can get are things that are in harmonious vibration with the frequency that you're operating on. Now, you have a marvelous brain. Your brain is not the mind. The brain is a manifestation of the mind. It's the same as the rest of the body, your ears, your eyes. They're used for different purposes. The brain is the electronic switching station. And with your mind, you have the ability to activate certain brain cells. And when you do, you change the vibration they're in. They're always vibrating. Everything in the universe vibrates. So your brain is moving all the time. Your body's moving all the time. It never stops moving. It's in a constant evolution of movement, all right? We live in an ocean of, of movement, uh, an ocean of motion, really. And that's always been that way. The brain is the electronic instrument that activates certain brains, or you activate certain brain cells in your brain, and that causes the body to move at a different speed. You have the ability to switch the vibration you're in. Now, when I first picked up this book, Think and Grow Rich, I was not in a good vibration. In a relatively short period of time, bang, like that, I changed the vibration I was in. I went from being in debt, always in debt, to having money in the bank. Now, how did that happen? It happened because I altered the vibration I was in. How did I alter the vibration? By following strict rules by following the advice of someone that had all kinds of money in the bank. See, if you want to win, talk to somebody who's doing what you want done. You talk to somebody who's doing what you want to do. And when you do that, the whole world is going to shift. That's just the way it works. All right? Now, number one, the law of perpetual transmutation. We're on page 19 in the workbook that we've just sent you. I'm going to touch on the seven great laws. The law of perpetual transmutation. That means energy is always moving into form. Now, we're going to go into all this in these laws. The law of relativity. Everything's relative. Everything's relative. This room that I'm in is neither big nor small until I relate it to something else. If I relate it to the control room where we've got all the switching going on where Joshua is working, then this room is big. If we relate it to to the washroom here, this room is big. If we relate it to the ballroom in the Marriott Hotel by the airport, you would say this is very small. Okay? Now, somebody's turned their mute off on their phone. The law of vibration, that's the one that decrees everything moves, nothing rests. Now think about this. Everything moves. This table, desk that I'm sitting at, is made of wood. We call it wood because of the speed the energy is vibrating at. Okay? Um, we call this paper because of the speed it's vibrating at. The same energy that we call paper used to be called wood. And before it was called wood, it was called earth. The agronomist could tell you all kinds of things about the earth. Then the earth turned into a tree. We altered the vibratory rate of the energy that we called wood or tree, and we turned it into paper. Then we wrote on the paper and put a cover on it. We called it a book. It's all energy. It's the same energy. The only thing we do is cause it to move at different speeds. So if you want to change your life, you've got to alter the vibration. All right? Then you have the law of polarity. Now, the law of polarity decrees that everything has an opposite. There's an inside and an outside. Okay? 
I, I can tell just by the speed that this is moving at, that I'm moving it at. Um, we're going to break this open for questions at, at a point here. And um, you ask the questions, Mike, you'll give them to me, and I'll attempt to answer them. But we're not going to do this whole lesson today. We may spend three weeks on this lesson. It takes a lot of time. There's a lot of information here. The law of polarity decrees that everything is both bad and good, and yet nothing is either bad nor good. See, that's where we go right back to the first law. Energy is. Energy is. God is. Now, you have to take then the expression of that energy, and then it's your perception that makes it good or bad. See, what one person perceives as bad, another person perceives as good. We, um, here in the company, um, we support Cynthia Kersey's mission in building schools in Africa. And Sandy Gallagher and I made a decision uh, some time ago that we would use money that we earn in this company to build schools in Africa. And we build a lot of schools in Africa. Now, we send somebody over there every year. I think this year, um, uh, Pixie and uh, Spencer are going there. Spencer's going to take some good video work. Um, last year, Kim and Gina went. Uh, the year before, Corey and her 15-year-old daughter went. And the year before that, Sandy went. Um, but Corey's daughter come back, and she was amazed at how how excited the kids were her, who were her peers, you know, because um, they could get up and go to school at 5 o'clock in the morning. Now, talk to a kid here about getting up and going to school at 5 o'clock in the morning. They say, you've got to be kidding me. I'm not going to school at 5 o'clock in the morning. They would see that as a terrible thing. In Kenya, where we're building these schools, they're excited about it, and they'll stay there till 8 o'clock at night. The fact that they can learn is enormous to them. So you see, what's bad to one person is good to another person. It's perception. I like the way our old friend Wayne Dyer used to put it. He says, when you change the way you look at something, what you look at changes. Perception is a mental faculty. Then you have the law of rhythm. Well, you, it's a flow. It's up and down. The law of rhythm affects everything. It's a change of the seasons the night into day, the day into night, the tide goes out, the tide comes in. See, the law of rhythm impacts everything. You're not always going to be at a high. You'll go into a low. When you go into a low, know that you're going back into a high. That's a flow of life. You're not going to feel like a million bucks all the time. Sometimes you might only feel like 900,000, but you're going to go back up maybe to a million one. See, we flow. That's the way energy flows. It's in a rhythm, a rhythm pattern. Then we have the law of cause and effect. Now that is what Emerson said was the law of, uh, of laws, the law of cause and effect. That law simply states what you put out comes back. What you put out comes back. Um, I had something here. I'll get it. I've got it here. Let me go and get it. It's rather interesting if we can take a look at this here now. See, there's five balls there. Maybe we'll switch to this camera. I think we get a better shot of it. Okay, switch over to the black magic. There we are. Now look at if I drop one of these, one comes back. If I drop two, two comes back. Now look at there's only five of them there. You can see there's just five there. Let's suppose I drop three. Will I just knock the two? No. If I drop three, I get three back. Now, if I drop four, I get four back. See, that is a law. Energy out, energy back. And it's equal and opposite. You get the same back as you put out. Okay? Now, if we'll switch back to the tripod here, uh, Joshua. The law of cause and effect. If you're not happy with what you're getting, you better focus on what you're giving. Okay? Now, let's go to the, to the um, flip chart here for a moment. Here you are here. We'll say this represents the result you're getting right now. So you're on this frequency. And we'll say this is where I want to go. 
Now, you will get there as sure as it's going to get dark tonight if you follow the law. But you've got to follow the law. If you want to keep moving in an upward direction, that means you want to get more, you want to receive more, then you've got to give more. It's that basic. There's nothing complicated about it. Most people are saying, give me the heat and then I'll put on the wood. Doesn't work that way. You want the heat, you've got to put on the wood and you've got to put on the wood first. Now, for you to keep moving in the direction of your dream, this is the frequency you want to get to. You've got to keep following the law. You've got to work with the law. And if you violate the law, you're just not going to win. You're just not going to win. It's that simple. All right? Now, we say the best definition of natural law seems to be that it is the uniform and orderly method of the omnipotent God. The laws are not man-made, so they're not going to be changed by man. Now think of that. The laws are not man-made, so they're not going to be changed by man. The law is the law, and the law never changes. Now look here. We're down on a line around line 25 or something like that. Um, unlike the other forms of animal life that have been created, we were given the power of choice or free will. Along with that power came certain responsibilities. The capacity to choose does not involve freedom from the consequence of our choice. The laws are rules which govern man, which govern every individual, and which we cover to some degree in this lesson, are as exact as the laws that govern the material universe. Look it. If I drop this, it's going to go down. That's governed by the material universe. That's called the law of gravity. Gravity is a law of the world. It's a law of this ball that we're on. Okay? There are laws that go beyond this world. They are universal laws. And they're the same everywhere. And you can't defy them. You've got to live with them. Now let me go back. We say, unlike any other form of animal life that has been created, we were given the power of choice or free will. Well, how do the other little creatures operate? They operate by instinct, which is perfect. Mikey has a reasonably new baby, a couple of months old, Frank. Now, if she left Frank to his own, <laughs> you know, make it on your own, Frank, Frank would die. He would starve to death. He would just lay there and die. He has no ability to think yet. He cannot think. His conscious faculties are not developed. He could not go and get food for himself. He would just lay there and die. Now, if a mother squirrel gave birth to a little squirrel here in the yard, which they will be doing, that little squirrel will be up and hustling and out and looking for food immediately. When you see um, a, a, a brand new little pony, a new horse, like that, the horse a little wobbly, but they're up on their legs and they're running around. They operate by instinct, and instinct is perfect. We operate with higher faculties. Intuition being one of them, perception, reason, the will. These are all higher faculties, unlike any other form of animal life. We were given, we were created, we were given the power of choice of free will. Now, along with this power came certain responsibility. The capacity to choose does not involve freedom from the consequence of our choice. Person says, well, I didn't understand this. That's tough. You lose. See, there is absolutely no uh, allowance for ignorance. You don't know, you lose. Up until I was 26, uh, before I got into Think and Grow Rich and then all these other books and uh, uh, this that I'm studying, The Science of Getting Rich, um, I was losing. I was losing it almost every corner I turned, it got worse. Nothing good happened, it just kept getting bad. And then you know something like that. Everything started to change. I went, I was 26 and I went from struggle, really struggle, just to get a couple of bucks to buy gas. My income was multiplied by over 40. I went from 4,000 to 175,000. Now, let's look at that for a moment. 
Here, I'll take out my trusty little calculator. 175,000 divided by 4,000. It was multiplied by 43.75. I was earning almost 44 times as much in a year. Just bang, like that had happened. What did I do? What did I do that made such a dramatic change? I went from violating the law to living in harmony with the law. I went from just trying to get by to focus on providing more service, better service. You see, you don't have to be particularly smart to make this work. You just have to be aware. You have to be aware that there are laws. And you've got to study these laws. Now, if, 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 if after 50-some years of studying this, I'm suggesting we're probably going to spend, I don't know, maybe two or three week sessions. Don't you think maybe you should do the same? This is going to turn in this study that we're doing here on the streaming. It's going to turn into something very big because we're going to make it big. Now, we're going to earn a lot of money doing this. But you know something? We're going to show you how to earn a lot of money doing this. I talked to a woman, young woman this morning from Ireland, and uh, she's really starting to make things happen. You know what? She's following the law. She's betting on herself. Now, this streaming is an affiliate uh, venture on our part. And what we're saying is we will share the wealth. We will share it with you. In other words, partner with us, work together with us on this. As you become a member of the Streaming Club, get other people to be members of it. Now, you're going to be receiving some real good information because we are ramping this up. There's a lot of time and a lot of people putting in a lot of time to get this set up right. Right from what we're actually going to call it to how we're going to work it. We're going to, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to start studying from cover to cover. From cover to cover. Now, does that mean that all the books we have, and I got lots of them here, does that mean you have to read books from cover to cover? No, it doesn't mean that at all. But it means we're going to study from cover to cover. See, I've read these books. I haven't read them. I've devoured them. I've been reading them for over 50 years. I'm going to pick the jewels, the ones that I love. And we're going to really study them each week. So you don't even have to read the books cover to cover. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take the essence out of those books and just winnow the essence out, and I'm going to share it with you. Earl Nightingale did that with his radio show, Our Changing World. He could take a book and like nothing thought, he'd have the essence out of that book, and he'd share it on a radio show. Well, I watched him. I worked with him. I studied him like a scientist, and that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to save you the time of reading the whole library, and I'm going to give you the essence, and then you can put it to work. Now listen, for $90 a month or $100 a month, we're going to dig into some of the greatest books that have ever been written. Robert Collier called it the wisdom of the ages. Well, wisdom of the ages is locked up in books, you see, and um, he was right. So we're digging into the wisdom of the ages. And as we dig into this, um, it's like it says here, you can act in accordance with these laws or you can disregard them, but you cannot in any way alter them. The laws can't be altered. They're not man-made, so they can't be changed by man. Now, you can learn these and learn to live in harmony. In fact, you can turn it into a habit. And when you turn it into a habit, everything is going to improve. I made up my mind in 1973. I decided to leave the Nightingale Cornet Corporation. I, um, I had gone to Lloyd and I said, Lloyd Cornet, I said, Lloyd, why don't we quit selling the recordings and start give the recordings away and teach the information, sell the seminar? And he said, no. We'll leave the seminar to Carnegie. We're going to stay in this business. So I, I knew then that I had to leave because I felt this had to be taught. I don't think you can just listen to a record and you've got it. Now, 
I was obsessed with this stuff because I was trying to figure out what the heck did I do? I mean, you don't go from nothing turning over a million dollars a year by accident, and yet I couldn't figure out what I did that was so dramatic and made such an enormous change. And I've never stopped studying. And I think I got the answers. But I sat in a room in a house on Maplewood Lane in Glenview, Illinois, studying this material. Lloyd had given me this in 1968. And I was studying this like a scientist. And I made up my mind that this information was the gospel. This was the real deal, the good news. And if I studied this, I could do anything I wanted. So then I started asking myself, what do I really want to do? And I took a pen and I wrote down that I would build a company that operated all over the world. The Proctor Gallagher Institute operates all over the world. Now, if somebody had said to me, let's see, let me do that again. Uh, this is 2016. That was 43 years ago. If somebody had said to me, do you know, there's a little girl living in uh, Seattle, Washington. She's just a kid. But she's going to go to school and she's going to develop her brain, her mind, and she's going to become very wise. And um, you will attract her into this business, oh, I don't know, in another 40 years. And she will help you do that. And then there's another one. Um, she hadn't even been born yet. And um, she's going to come in. She's going to have marketing smarts. See? Well, they both work in the company. Mikey, Sandy. Oh, by the way, there's another one. Let's see. Oh, she's, she hadn't even been thought of either. She's going to be great on operations. She's going to come into your company. See, you're going to attract people. Some of them have not even been born yet, Bob. You're going to attract them. If somebody had said that to me, I would have thought, yeah, sure. You know? I never thought how I was going to do it. That never entered my mind. Now, we have attracted people from all over the world. And we're forever attracting people. Do you know, and as you're studying this, if you get the idea, man, I'd really like to work at this, we want you to work at it. We do. We want you to work it. We not only want you to, to develop a, a large affiliate membership with this streaming, um, you might take a look at being a consultant with us because we're working very closely with the consultants now. In fact, I'm working with them all the time. Well, you see, you can act in accordance with these laws or you can disregard them, but you cannot in any way alter them. The law forever operates and holds you to strict accountability, and there is not the slightest allowance for ignorance. If you don't study, you're going to stay in an ignorant state insofar as the law is concerned. I guarantee if you stay in an ignorant state insofar as the law is concerned, you will violate them because we are programmed to violate the law. Now, if you doubt me, just stop and think. Think of how proud a parent is, their little Johnny or their little Billy or Betty is a real little go-getter. I don't want to build go-getters. I want to build go-givers. Do you see the difference? Do you really see the difference? Now, let me look here for a moment. I want you to really think about this. All over the world, we have people come to our company to study this information. You're one of them. Now, just looking at this is not good enough. You've got to study this. Let me get this out of the way. You've got to study this. And you've got to end up studying it like a scientist. Say, well, how do they study it? In other words, they attempt to understand every aspect of it. Now, look it. As you witness viewing the secret, the law of attraction will deliver to you what you do not want as quickly and as certainly as it will deliver what you do want. You see, the law works both ways. It doesn't just work one way. It works both ways. The law will give you what you don't want. You know, we're talking about the laws and we're talking about how everything happens. Andrew Carnegie said, any idea that's held in your mind, any idea that's held in the mind, that's emphasized, that's either feared or revered. 
will begin at once to clothe itself in the most convenient and appropriate form available. Now, what do we say here? As you've witnessed viewing the secret, the law of attraction will deliver to you what you do not want as quickly and certainly as it delivers what you do want. You see, if you're thinking of what you don't want, if you're worried something's going to happen, you're putting yourself in that vibration, you're on that frequency, you're going to attract it just as sure as it gets dark out tonight because it gets dark by law and you attract by law. So what do we have to train ourselves to do? We have to train ourselves that this whole universe, ourself included, operates by law. And that's what we're studying here. We're studying the law. The title of this chapter is, There is a Science to Getting Rich. Now, the ownership of money and property comes as a result of doing things in a certain way. Doing things in a certain way by law. See, Waddles said, you don't get rich by doing certain things. You get rich by doing things in a certain way. Those who do things in a certain way, whether on purpose or accidentally, get rich. You say, well, how does that work? Listen, I found after I studied this and broke it all down, that most of the people that are doing really well cannot articulate on why they are. Um, they're what you call unconscious competence. They're doing really well, but they've got something that's non-transferable. They can't give it to anybody. Those who do things in a certain way, whether on purpose or accidentally, get rich. Those who do not things in a certain way, no matter how hard they work or how able they are, remain poor. Some are absolutely brilliant. They remain poor. Some work very hard. They remain poor. You've got to follow the law. Now, I'm going to open this up for some, sec for some secrets, for some questions. So if you've got questions, um, I've got one concept here from Deb. It says, one of the difficulties I have is staying aware of the vibration I am in. How do I stay focused on my vibration? Well, let's take a look at the comment. One of the difficulties I have is staying aware of the vibration I'm in. Now, that's repeated. One of the difficulties I have is staying aware of the vibration I'm in. How do I stay focused on my vibration? Stop saying it's difficult. See, I'm so happy and grateful now that I am acutely aware of the vibration I'm in. I am so happy and aware that every day, frequently, I pay attention to how I feel, knowing that feeling is the conscious awareness of vibration. You start affirming what you want. Don't talk about what you don't want. Don't give energy to problems. Whatever you give energy to grows. That's what Emerson said. Whatever you give energy to grows. Now, how to tell if you should be prudent with an investment and how would you go about it? All right? How to tell if you should be, if you're being prudent with an investment, how should you go about it? Well, first of all, um, I would be very prudent, wise, if you want, uh, uh, if I were investing in this business, because I know this business, and I know how to invest wisely. Um, I invested in Sandy Gallagher, and uh, that was a very wise investment, a very wise investment. Now, Sandy Gallagher invested in me and invested in this company before I ever invested in her. I wanted to make certain that she would bet on herself. I was prepared to bet on her, but she had to bet on herself, and she did. She came to the table with a few hundred thousand dollars. She worked for a long time, didn't charge anything, very wise, and I was watching. I was watching what she did. I was very aware of it, you know. Don't say, give me the heat, and then I'll put on the wood. Put on the wood, and then you'll get the heat. So I watched. Now, I thought she would be a wise investment. She owns half of this company. That was a very wise investment. The company's done so much better. Have we done twice as much? Oh, more than twice as much because she's involved. You see, you've got, to, um, you've got to get advice if you don't know. Now, if I was going to invest in something else uh, other than this business, 
I would have to get advice because I don't pay attention to really much of anything outside of this business. I am very involved in this. I love this. So I would go to somebody. I would go to somebody who I know has done very well in that particular area. And I would listen to them. I might go to a second person that's done very well. And if their information was very much the same, then I'd probably follow it. Okay? How do we get clear on what we're supposed to do in life, what our purpose is? You pay attention to what you love. You pay attention to what you love doing. Every morning, sit down, take a pad. I've got a pad here, okay? I buy a lot of these. I sit down with a pen. And by the way, I have these pads shipped from England. They come from Smithson on Bond Street since 1887. Royalty buy these. They're beautiful pads. Do you know, the pad causes you to get into a good vibration. You'll say, come on. Oh no, it does. It does. It's not just an ordinary pad. It's a nice pad. And I buy these by the dozens. And this is what I take notes. Now, if you sit down and you ask yourself, what do I really love doing every morning? Every morning. Now, you might do it for a whole year. Spend 30 minutes every morning. Make yourself a pot of coffee. Go sit in a quiet place by yourself. Say, what do I really love doing? Do you know what I love doing? I love doing what I'm doing. I love doing what I'm doing. I have been studying this for over 50 years. It's helped me earn millions of dollars. I'm coming up to my 82nd birthday. I feel fit as a fiddle. I have no intentions of slowing down. I'm flying over to Vienna on Saturday. I'll come back the following Saturday. Um, I'm all over the place. You know why? Because I feel good. You know what's feeling? Conscious awareness of vibration. Well, you've got to take the time to find out what you love to do and then dedicate your life to it, okay? I've noticed that I'm in a great vibration. I notice that when I am in a great vibration, I sell more effectively for several days in a row than not. How can I maintain that good vibration? <laughs> That's a good question, isn't it? Fall in love with the idea of helping the people you're serving. That's how you stay in a good vibration. You stay in a good vibration by having good ideas in your mind. Listen, vibration is something that is constant. You are in a vibration all the time. You are in a good vibration all the time. Um, it never changes. It never changes. You'll always be in a vibration. Now, it's the thoughts you think that dictate the vibration you're in. So think pleasant thoughts all the time. Here, somebody's talking about music. If I can get my mouse, there it is. Yeah, turn up the music on there, Josh. It's sitting on the side. Turn it up. Pardon? Turn it up. No, turn it up. I want it turned on. Turned on. Turn a little louder. Louder, Josh. Now, there's a beautiful album called Together. It's absolutely beautiful music. I don't have a plane this loud. A new song will come on. I have that playing quietly. I'm in my studio. I come in my studio and I just take my mouse and I tap and the music comes on. I leave it on at night. Sometimes it's on in the morning. Sometimes I have to turn it back on in the morning. Music makes you feel good. Okay, Josh, you can turn that off now, thanks. Oh, by the way, Josh is in Phoenix, and he's turning my computer on and off here. He's also controlling this. Mikey's in Texas. See the beauty of what we've got to work with today? Now, here the point is, Bob, you say to listen to music when you're feeling bad, but sometimes bad things happen and music doesn't work. How do I stay in a positive vibration all the time? You're not going to be in a positive vibration all the time. You're not. 
Be aware when you're not. Be aware when you've moved into a negative vibration and know that there's something good about whatever's happened. There's something good about it. And change it as quickly as possible. I am not in a good vibration all the time. I'm in a good vibration almost all the time. I have become very good at when I move into a bad vibration, get out of it right away. Get your coat, don't forget your hat, and leave your worries, leave them on the doorstep. You know, I can see clearly now the rain is gone. I can see all obstacles in my way. Or I pretend you're happy when you're blue. It isn't very hard to do. I, I have all these songs. I've got them fresh in my mind. And I'll start singing them. Even when I'm not feeling good, I'll start singing them. And before long, I'm feeling good. But I don't even notice when I started feeling good because I feel good and I'm just in a good vibration. Understand this. You have control. Let's go back. You can act in accordance with these laws or you can disregard them, but you cannot in any way alter them. You can control the vibration you're in. Let me go back to another page that we've already covered. Unlike any other form of animal life that has been created, you were given the power of choice or free will. Along with this power came certain responsibilities. The capacity to choose does not involve freedom from the consequence of your choice. When you're feeling bad, that was a choice. When you're feeling bad, that's a choice. Mick Patterson says, on the anniversary of Stella and the timekeepers, he has a movie deal with Phil. Well, that's pretty good, okay? Mick Patterson came to a seminar and he wrote a book, Stella. Phil Goldfein comes to the seminars. I've helped Phil by coaching him to win a, an Oscar or in millions of dollars. Well, Mick got a contract with him for his book he wrote, Stella. On the anniversary, he's got a deal. He says, I find myself always being intellectual. How do I initiate? Now, it wasn't Mick that said this. There's just somebody else coming on. I find myself always being intellectual. How do I initiate the emotional faculty? By music. Sing. 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 Sing out loud. See, most people say you're singing. You can't sing, Proctor. What do you mean I can't sing? I may not be a Frank Sinatra or an Elvis Presley or a whatever, uh, but I can sing. I may not be able to sell records, but I can sing. And when you sing, you move yourself into good vibration. I can see clearly now the rain is gone. You've got to have confidence enough in yourself that like that, you change the vibration you're in. Quit screwing around. This is serious business. It's called your life. How do I get out of the paradigm of always worrying about what people think of me? and what they think of what I say and do. This is a prison I know is holding me in. Well, you're on the right track. You're on the right track. Vernon Howard said, you cannot escape from a prison if you don't know you're in one. Do you know, Elena Chapman has a great program. And she, she got the answer to that. She wrote the book. She wrote the book. First of all, what difference does it make what people think about you? See, if you're worried about what people think about you, you're going to be constantly wondering, what do they think, what do they think? Because you're continually changing. You don't stay with the same people all the time. You're moving around. Okay? You know what you've got to be really concerned with? What do you think of you? What do you think of you? See, I never used to like me. I never used to like me. And so I didn't think anybody else liked me either. I was not a happy guy. Do you know something? I really like me today. Mwah. I can kiss myself. I hope you like me, but if you don't, that's your problem, baby. Because I do like me. And if you practice liking yourself and helping others, you will quit worrying about what others think of you. You will quit worrying about it. Now, this is very, very important. Now, another question, how do I emotionalize my vision? Um, study, let me see. This book. Study this book. Stella Adler, The Art of Acting. Study it. 
Okay, it's a great book. Stella Adler, The Art of Acting. You've got to learn to act the way you want to be. James Allen, or William James gave us that in Harvard way back in 1900. Act like the person you want to become. Act like the person you want to become. What can I do towards shifting this paradigm of relying on my pension plan that doesn't allow me to earn well on it and no longer serves me? What can I do? I'd get rid of the damn pension if I were you. What kind of a pension won't permit you to earn any money? I'd give the pension back to them and go to work. I, I would go to work and let them catch me. I think they're violating some kind of laws with something like that. Other than the candle exercise, what can I do to improve my focus? Well, you could um, take and put a dot on the wall opposite your favorite chair and then stare at that dot. But you've got to discipline yourself to do this every day, a couple of times a day, for as long as uh, it takes, months. See, what you're doing is strengthen your muscles. Can you imagine if I was going to really develop big muscles if I went to the gym once and I lifted some dumb weights and then I quit? <laughs> it's not going to do me any good. You've got to do it every day. Every day for a given period of time. And you will get so focused. I am very focused. I am very focused. And I pride myself in being very focused. That's where your mental power comes. How do I identify my paradigms and how do I know which ones to work on first? That's very simple. Take a look at your results. What result is it that you don't like? Understand that that result is hooked into a behavioral pattern and a way of thinking. Let's suppose you're always having trouble with money. Say, I'm going to change that. That's a paradigm. That's why when uh, I start working with somebody, that's the first thing I ask them. What's the most you've ever earned in a year? I don't care what it is, but I want to know what it is. And then start repeating. I'm so happy and grateful now that money comes to me in increasing quantities through multiple sources on a continuous basis. Let's suppose you're always late. If you're always late, you drive everybody crazy. But none as much as you drive yourself crazy. It bothers you. You don't like being late. It's always a hassle and a hustle. Then be early. Start repeating. I'm so happy and grateful now that I'm always on Lombardi time. I'm always early. I am so happy and grateful now that I am always early. For every appointment, for everything I do, I'm always early. And at least five or ten minutes early. And repeat it over and over and over. You will soon start to do it. You don't say, how do I do this? I wish I'm getting so tired of being late. No, change it. The paradigm is controlling the results. You've got to change the thing that's causing the result. How do you do that? By seeing yourself with a new result. I have a full-time job, but my goal is to start my own business. I wrote this on my goal card. What else should I do to make my goal a reality? Go into business, start the business. What business do you want to go into? Just start it. Start it. In fact, that's what I did. I was on the fire department. And I was prepared to do anything honest to earn money. Somebody said there's good money cleaning floors. I said, I'm not proud I'll clean floors. Now, this is a real, this is a real, this is a good story. I started off doing one office, $15 a time, wash the floor twice a month. It was at Canada Starch on Comstock Road in Toronto. And then I started cleaning Kirby's Construction. That was $65 a month. Now I'm up to $100 a month. Do you know the chief was only earning $11,400, $11,500 a month, a year. I got to the point where I was earning over $11,000 a month and I was afraid to quit the job. You see, I was working on the premise that, that um, uh, somebody's phone's on, uh, not on mute. And it's some, uh, I was operating on the premise uh, that there was security in a job. And there's no such thing as security in a job. If you think there's security in a job and you lose your job, you lost everything, you're going to be totally demoralized. Security is an inside thing. If you haven't got it there, you haven't got it. Okay? Now, keep thinking about this. You work at your part-time, whatever it is, until you match your income at your job. Then quit your job. Don't put yourself in a bad spot. Now, you may have to work a lot of extra hours and you may get really tired. Do it anyway. 
You probably don't work anywhere near as hard as you're capable of earning. But you've got to get your part-time income to match your full-time income, then get rid of the full-time job, and then really start to build your business. Now, that's what I did. And in nothing flat, I was cleaning offices in Toronto, Montreal, Boston, Cleveland, Atlanta, and London, England. Are you streaming the seminar in July? Yes, we sure are. Yes, we are. We are streaming the seminar. We will stream every seminar from now on. Streaming is the name of the game. Okay? I'm reading Think and Grow Rich, and it's giving me anxiety. <laughs> it's giving me anxiety. What should I do about the anxiety? Well, first of all, you have to understand. Let's switch over to this flip chart for a minute, Joshua. Listen. The think and grow rich is not giving you anxiety. It is not giving you anxiety. You are giving you anxiety. Look at here. There's your mind. There's your body. Okay? Over here is ignorance, and over here is knowledge, okay? Now, the anxiety is down here. Anxiety is a physical vibration. You start up here, there's a power flowing into your conscious mind, and you can make, and it just is. You make it either negative or positive. There's your law of polarity. And as this power goes in, you build an image. Now, worry and doubt are two negative ways of thinking. And then you take and impress that. This is your emotional mind. And you impress that negative idea on your emotional mind. That sets up a vibration known as fear. Now that energy was impressed. It must be expressed through the only medium it can, the physical body. It expresses itself as anxiety. The anxiety is suppressed. The suppression turns to depression, disease, and on it goes. Now what is the opposite of all this? The opposite of doubt and worry is understanding. The only way to develop understanding is through study. That's what you're doing right now. And through understanding, we know we quit looking at our present results and we start building the image of what we want. And as we get emotionally involved with that image, we set up a vibration called faith. Now, here's a strange thing about faith and fear. Both of them demand that you must believe in something you cannot see. You can't see through your physical senses. You can only see in the screen of the mind. The faith sets up a vibration called well-being. The well-being is expressed, it's not suppressed, and it accelerates, it doesn't turn into depression. So you see, you're really doing this to yourself. You're worried and you're doubtful. Quit worrying and quit be doubtful. Understand this. You do the right thing and you do it every day and you do it religiously day after day after day. The results have to happen. That's a law. I'm about to go through bankruptcy. I've been doing the gratitude exercise every morning and also accepting, harvesting, and forgiving. I'm doing my best to keep a good attitude. What else should I do? Well, um... If you're about to go through it, go through it, wipe the state clean. The reason for bankruptcy, it was set up to give a person another chance. Here's what you want to understand. The bankruptcy starts in here. Going into bankruptcy it does not change what's going on in here. You've got to change what's going on in here. That's why many people go into bankruptcy, they get out of it, they start to work their way out of it, and they go into bankruptcy again. Because they have never changed into prosperity thinking. Bankruptcy is preceded by poverty thinking. Bankruptcy is preceded by violating the law. Now forgive yourself and say, I am going up from this point on. I forgive myself. I let go of all bad thoughts. I don't concern myself with what other people think. I am starting over. And I am going to study this and I'm going to make it work. Is it necessary to find out where your paradigms came from or just focus on changing them. You don't need to worry about where they came from. That's psychoanalysis. And the psychoanalyst is going out of style very, very fast. Psychotherapy is taking over. Psychoanalyst is where they start to dig and find out where the problem originated. Who the hell cares? You find out where it's originated, you still have it. How do you replace it? You replace it by focusing on something that's essentially the opposite and getting emotionally involved in that. And pretty soon that overpowers the other and you're free. 
How do you determine when to charge someone for your help and when to just help them? Follow your feelings. Follow your feelings. That's the way to do it. And if you feel you should charge them, charge them. And if you feel you should do it for nothing, do it for nothing. Sometimes I do it for nothing. Sometimes I charge ridiculous amounts of money. You see? I follow my feelings. How can we identify whether it's intuition or fear that is stopping us? <laughs> You'll know. You will know. Intuition very rarely stops you. I'll tell you, intuition's always there first. Always there first. It's, it's usually the change in the paradigm that sets up the fear. Don't let it stop you. That's a terror barrier. Go right through it. What is the name of the music album you are playing? Together. Together. It was made in New Zealand. Um, Joshua, um, where do you get that online? It's not just together, it's by whom? It's by Carl Doy. Car Carl Doy. Carl Doy. And it's together. It's a phenomenal album. Absolutely. I'll sometimes play it for months. I've been playing it in here all year. <laughs> I just keep playing it over and over and over again. Great call. Okay, well, that's it, folks. We are at the end of the road, and we only got to the second page, and we didn't even get through the second page. We are going to be working on this book, The Science of Getting Rich, and we're going to work our way all the way through it. I have been studying this since 1968. It works. If you think you'd like to do what I'm doing, we want you to do it with us. I want you to send a letter to admin at proctorgallagher.com and say, I would like to become a consultant with you guys. But at any rate, find out about how this affiliate works. Get a link and just keep sharing it with people because it's worth learning. It's good stuff and you can earn a fortune. Listen, if you just get 100 people over the next year, you've got an extra $5,000 a month coming in. If you got 1,000 people over the next year, you really became aggressive, that's $50,000 a month. Isn't that cool? We'd be happy to give it to you. I know if Sandy Gallagher's watching this, she'll say, I'll write that check in a hurry. And she's got it. Lady with all the money. Mikey, thank you very much. Josh, thank you very much. And I want to thank you. And I'll come back to this camera. And I want to thank you. And Bob, I want to thank you. <laughs> we will see you at the next streaming. Bye-bye.